Ja busy living so ba busy living so ba busy living so ba. It is episode 418. Wowza, and it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. If you're watching me on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Please go to my website and sign up for my newsletter that comes out on Fridays. Please, please, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And today, if you're not watching me on YouTube and you're just listening to me, I'm wearing a love necklace. And then I'm wearing this necklace my husband gave me for Christmas. And it's got all different hearts on it. It's so cute. It's like from Jennifer Miller, but it's so cute. It's, um, it has all these hearts on it. It's very cute, 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 cute. And the one in the middle even has an evil eye. And the one in the middle at the bottom says, love, love, love. Doesn't it all begin with love? Doesn't everything begin with love? It does. But we're like, what is going on? I just watched, um, did you watch Super Bowl? Did you enjoy the Super Bowl? I guess we saw love at the end. At least the commentators were commenting on Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's embrace at the end. And he's like, get over here, girl. Let me give you a hug. Let me tell you, I love you. And she's whispering sweet nothings in his ear. Oh my gosh. So cute. So cute. Young love. But would you want to have yours on display for the whole world to say? See, I don't think I would. I definitely do not think I would. Would you be like, have everybody giving their opinions on what they think? It's so funny. It's like, when did all of a sudden, I think it's been, I don't know what year it started where people put celebrities on this shelf that was so high up and like above us, even though this is just their God given gift is either singing, dancing, throwing a football knocking other guys down, running down a field is really good. They're really fast. They're really good at throwing. They've got a strong arm or a woman's really good at playing tennis. She's great. But do we care what she does besides playing tennis? Not me. No. I think you're great at singing Taylor Swift. I love some of your songs. I think you're awesome. I think Travis is an amazing football player. I think that's great. But what's going on in his politics and his love life is really none of my business. I don't care. You're the jesters. Sorry, back in the day. The king and queen were always entertained by people like this. And they're like, oh, they're entertainers. And they're amazing. I'm not poo-pooing them. But I don't know that you really want to know who I'm voting for. I mean, you probably have figured it out. But, you know, the reality is this. It's none of anybody's business but our own. It's privacy. We have to have some things to be, like, private about, right? It's like some things I'm just going to hold, say, okay, I'm not going to come out and say exactly what I'm thinking. But, you know, I think that um, coming out and showing, especially as an entertainer, because they have so many followers that love their voice. It's like I adore Barbara Streisand. I love her voice. I don't care what she's who she's voting for. I don't care. She's not any smarter than any of us. She doesn't have this, like, wisdom that we don't have. I mean, I think the only thing that these entertainers have, which I don't have, is billions of dollars and my own private jet and a staff of how many to help me. So, mm. and since when is all that matters about money? It can't be, right? We got to get back to basics. God, family, traditions, building things in our lives. I was... um. I was also somebody, a Caroline, who helps me out, um, who's amazing, sent me an article yesterday about the Waste Management Golf Tournament in Phoenix. I think it was in Phoenix yesterday. No, this past weekend. And um, she said that, or the article said that Waste Management had to stop, um, stop selling drinks at this event because people were acting so insane insane craziness. When did all this happen? This craziness going on in front of everybody else? Like when did we decide to get totally shit faced in front of everybody? I mean, I understand there being like a little sprinkling of people that were overserved, but to have people that were overserved, like running into like the, where they're actually the greens of where people are playing golf professionals are playing in a tournament. And you decide because I've had so many cocktails, it's take away all my inhibitions to be able to go and say, you know what, I'm going to run across this golf course. It doesn't matter. 
what you think. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We can't respect each other. I mean, I think it starts at the beginning. It's like all this money, all this money, all this disrespect, all this booze, all these drugs, are these all these pharmaceuticals, all this stuff is like killing us, making us sick. And then this these holidays like Valentine's Day, which I have I mentioned on here, and I think last week, and if I'm being redundant, I'm sorry. But I remember handing out Valentines to everybody at school and everybody was included. And it was kind of a fun thing. It was like conversation pieces. Now they're putting like drugs in conversation pieces, you guys. Somebody just, somebody just sent me an, um, a message on social media that said they knew, know of someone that bummed a cigarette from somebody, okay, which is pretty mundane. I th that was, used to be done all the time. And they bummed a cigarette and the cigarette had fentanyl. Really? Are you serious? Like you can't. So this is like stuff, like all this stuff is dark. We got to get through the dark. We got to go be like, I'm not doing this dark. I'm going to do light. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do happy. I'm going to do colorful. I'm going to do white. I'm going to do bright colors. I'm not going to do this darkness because it's too much. It's just too much. Being on this planet today, it's kind of hard. And it's especially hard if you feel bad about yourself. If you are feeling bad about yourself and you look at things and on the inside, you're just feeling like such crap and you go and you look at all this stuff that's on the outside. I'm just going to give you one example, social media. Social media is a drainer. Social media is of the first place that's going to take you down that depression place. Okay. It's going to be like a toilet bowl. You're going to go in there. You're going to open up the app and it's like opening up the toilet and then you flush the toilet and that's how you're going to go. You're like, I'm going to open up the app and then I'm going to go down the toilet. And then the waste spot for that toilet is your family and friends and you feel like shit. And you're like, I already feel bad. And now I'm gone and put myself in the comparison mode. I'm comparing how I feel on the inside by how you look on the outside. Think about that. You're comparing what you feel inside. Meaning self-loathing, remorse, regret, sadness, shame, hurt. Jealousy, envy, and the list could go on ad nauseum on the way you're feeling. And you feel like this and you go and you decide, I'm going to go on Facebook. Isn't that a good idea? Bang. Bad idea. Bad idea. Isn't it a good idea to go on Instagram and see what all my, and I'm doing air quotes here if you're not watching. What are all my friends doing, my dear? friends in quotes again. What are they doing? Look, they're on this romantic vacation with their partner and they look so happy and you feel like shit. And now you looked at that. And now you feel, there you go down the toilet train. I have to tell you, I reached out to a previous guest on the podcast and I said to her, I asked her if I said, did you get my email? And she goes, actually, I'm in a self-care regimen right now. I'm like, oh, really? She's like, I'm not doing email and I'm not doing social media. But she obviously checked her message on social media. But we have to check the messages just because we have to respond to people. But I don't have to go like into the zone of like, all right, here I go down the abyss. I'm going to open up the Instagram and now I'm going to go start and I'm in there and I'm following people I don't even know. And I'm looking at people's lives I don't even know. And I'm watching all this stuff I don't even know. And I'm comparing how I feel on the inside with these people I don't even know. And it's worse with the people you do know because you're like, how are they so good? How are they so lucky? But you really don't know what was going on. We really don't know. And why do we care? It was so funny. I'll never forget when Facebook came out. And Betty White, God bless Betty White, came out and she was on a Saturday Night Live skit. And she said, 
If you think I'm going to go look at some pictures of my friends' vacations and my friends doing things where I wasn't included, and you think I'm going to waste my time doing that, you have to be crazy. I was like, oh my God, she's brilliant. She's exactly right. Do you want to be invited to your friend's house and go be served popcorn and watch their vacation on um, on the screen or on the TV? Or they pull down a screen and they put, they plug in their phone and they're like, here, let's, we're going to watch my vacation. You'd be like, no, sorry, I have to go do laundry. You'd be like, mm, no, I don't want to do that. Because if you think about it in logical terms, that's what all this stuff is. It's like this, like, I mean, I understand if you want to go find a recipe or you want to go find, like, I wanted to find a photographer. I went on Instagram because I wanted to see what their work looked like. That made sense, right? Or if you want to see a caterer or something like that, or you want to see a, part, a wedding planner or a party planner. I understand going and looking at somebody's portfolio and using it for the for that information. Like you're going to go search for something, but then to think that you're going to go and go look at people you know, really? you care? Like, think about that in an honest cut. It's like, do I care what Taylor Swift or Barbara Streisand or Travis Kelsey or any other celebrity is doing when they go to the, um, to the ballot box in November? Do I care what they're doing? Because let's be honest, are my same concerns, their same concerns? Probably not. No. They're probably not the same concerns that I have. You know, I have concerns on how we're going to, like, get these drugs out of our country. How are we going to deal with this epidemic that's happening in our country with the drugs? How are we going to handle the people that are going to golf tournaments and having an entire— So a couple of people totally screwed up at this golf tournament, made a total mockery of themselves. I bet there was probably more than just a couple, but there were people that went out and decided to go— be absolutely obnoxious, do things to, to that could have hurt them or hurt others. And they decided that's it. Waste management said the whole tournament said no more alcohol is being served. Okay. Is that a bad idea? I don't think that's such a bad idea. Let's be honest. I mean, Unless you have a driver that's going to take you to this event, do you really need to go in the hot sun and walk around and follow golfers? And the only thing that's going to make it fun is alcohol. Really? It's like people, so many people relate to like going on vacation to getting really messed up. It's like, I can't wait to go on vacation and sit on the beach and get really drunk. I can't wait. I can't wait to go to that all-inclusive resort and drink all I want to drink. Or I can't wait to go on that cruise and drink as much as I want to drink. Really? Really? I'm going to tell you, I went when I was, must have been 22 years old, I guess. I was, I had broken my ankle in Colorado. I was not there skiing yet. I was in Boulder and I was running down the street with high heel cowboy boots on and I was sliding down Pearl Street and just running down the street like, I was in college and, um, and I broke my ankle and my friends didn't take me to the hospital for two days. And I went to the doctors in Colorado and they're like, we're going to have to like, we're going to have to cut you open and we're going to have to put in a plate and we're going to have to put in all these screws and all this stuff. And I looked at this doctor and I'm like, totally scared and mortified. I'm like, you know what? I live in Washington, DC. Why don't you just wrap it up and I'm going to take it back to the East coast. And they did. And I had a broken ankle and they ended up just having to put a cast on it. And I traveled at that time. And I was going with my mom and my sisters to Ireland on a shopping tour, which is what I love Ireland. But, you know, there's water, there's crystal and there is wool sweaters. And after that, you're kind of like, okay, this is great shopping. But I had a broken ankle. So I couldn't do some of these things. And I just tell you, I, I'm like, I'm not ashamed of it because I don't, I don't, I actually don't, you know, I don't regret anything that happened to me because I earned it all just like these wrinkles on my face. Um, I made a lot of lots and lots of memories, but 
I got on the plane, Air Lingus, and we flew to Shannon. And um, I was with the rugby team from New York that was going to play Dublin. We ran out of booze halfway over the Atlantic. You could still smoke cigarettes on planes by the, at that time. So I'm smoking cigarettes and drinking. And I spent the entire time hanging out with the bus driver who was taking the tour around and getting totally wasted. And I don't really remember much of it besides one of my sisters being so mad at me. She was like, oh, my God, because she had to get stuck babysitting me. And I apologize for that profusely, by the way, if she's listening to this again and again and again. If I could go back and change it, which I can't. But I apologize with that you had to become my babysitter. But I think back that people still do that. The people are like, like now it's even okay to be blacked out. I will tell you, I was watching the Super Bowl and, you know, Travis Kelsey gets up there um, at, holding, you know, the trophy. And he's like, it's all right. All right. To party. And I'm like, okay. And somebody else was interviewing another player and he said, well, you know, you might get blacked out tonight. And I'm like, okay. So. Now the commentators are telling people how they're going to get so drunk. Everybody's going to get so drunk now. We won this thing, so now it's time to get blacked out drunk. Let's do it. That's how we win. That's when life gets good. I I did this big thing, so now I'm going to go drink to oblivion. Isn't this fun? It's really fun. I didn't think it was fun. I have to be honest. I didn't think it was fun. I hated myself always the next day, always hated myself. I always was hungover and I've been to the hospital for a hangover. That same sister that had to save me in Ireland was like, I, one time I called her and I'm like, can you come help me? I'm really sick. I think I need to go to the hospital. And she was like, what did you drink? And I'm like, mm, well, let's see. I had dirty martini or maybe I had two or three of those then I had some wine then I had some shots then I had some whiskey and she looked at me like with like this stunned face like hello are you so stupid that you don't you wonder why you're sick oh right I'm sick because I had alcohol poisoning and I had to go check myself into the ER and get fluid so that I was okay oh I also saw this other thing you can I I, I saw this ad this guy, Joe Rogan had this guy on and he's developing this medicine or this medicine's out there that you can take so that when you take it and you're drinking, if you drink 10 drinks, you're only going to feel like you had five. Really? And abstinence seems so bad, right? Not drinking seems so bad, right? If I remove the pain killers of my life, legal ones and illegal ones, I remove them from my life. And then what am I stuck with? Me. Me. Feelings of inadequacy, feelings of sadness, feelings of loneliness, feelings of all these and feelings of like, if you're going to go with the bros or you're going to go with your girlfriends and you're going to go have a girl's weekend and it's all about getting drunk and you just quit drinking and you're like, oh my God, I'm not included in that. And it's kind of funny because I haven't been invited on a girl's trip. Um, considering I got sober at 37, I don't think they were doing girl's trips back, you know, almost 20 years ago. Um, but when they did do girls trips, I'll tell you this, these girls that I went to high school with and grew up with, not Jeannie, she wasn't included in this, these other girls, they were going on a 50th, I'm just telling you guys this truth, this is literally what happened to me. So they turned, we all turned 50 and this is five years, almost six years ago. And they went on a trip. Now, tell you, tell me this, if I wasn't feeling good about myself here. So I'm not feeling good about myself probably at this point. And these girls go on and post a picture on Facebook of all the girls that were invited in the, on the girls' trip. And I was in the picture as well, but I wasn't included. So they had a picture of them when they were 50 and had the picture with me in it from when we were young. And they were like side by side. I'm like, how do you think that made me feel? Hmm. <laughs> I did say something to some of them. I did say something. I was like, really? That was really rude and un inconsiderate and mean. Mean girls. Now, this is my age. I'm born in 1968, so I'm old right now. And they post this stuff on Facebook. I'm telling you. 
And I had, so I had 12 years of sobriety then? Yeah, 12 years. And I'm like, okay, I have 12 years of sobriety and this is what these people are doing and I'm trying not to feel bad. sorry for myself. I'm trying not to, see if I hadn't gone to Facebook, that would have been the first thing. If I hadn't gone to Facebook, I wouldn't have opened that toilet bowl of the, the toilet head, like the cover, and I wouldn't lid, the lid for the toilet, and I wouldn't have lifted that and then gone down the chute. Like, why aren't I included? Why didn't I get invited? What's wrong with me? Why don't they like me? Oh, that's right. I don't drink. I don't do certain things that I used to do. And maybe that's why, or maybe they just don't like me anymore. Whatever the case, it still hurt. I did say something, but I understand where people are out there when you're like, I, this is scary where we're living these days. People aren't nice to each other. And especially women, like, I think that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift are adorable. Like, go for it, guys. You're like cute. You're both successful in your own rights. You both really are dedicated to what you do. You're creative. You love singing. He loves running. He loves blocking. He loves catching balls. I love it. He's so good at it. And I think it's great. And here we are. We get to watch them because they're doing their lives, unfortunately or fortunately, in front of these cameras. And instead of going, oh, my God, I'm so sick of them, be like, all right, it's great. You guys are great. Get a room. Um, and, you know, let go. I, I, it's, <laughs> do we really care? I mean, you don't want to see me out there smooshing with my husband. I doubt. No. It's great. I can do that in my home. I don't need to in front of you guys. No, and I'm not a celebrity like they are and they are celebrities. And for some reason, people are so fascinated with these people that, you know, there, there's only a couple people in the world. Like, I don't know how many people make a billion dollars in their music. I don't know many people who are like Taylor Swift. I really don't. And I don't know how long this will last. It's gone a long time. I think from my, what I understand, you can, the tickets to go to a concert, for like a thousand dollars. Like, a lot of people can't afford that. But I'm going to listen to your music because it brings me happiness and it brings me joy. And I dance when I listen to it. And it's fun. And it gets me moving. And she was born with this gift. And I'm so grateful for that. I don't need to beat her up because she's in love with this guy. I, but I don't want to know who she's voting for. I don't care. I don't care. She doesn't have the problems that I have problems. She doesn't have to go be like, how am I going to pay for this? How am I going to pay for that? Oh my gosh, gas prices have gone to this. Oh my gosh, gas prices have gone to that. She doesn't worry about that. She flies on her own jet. She doesn't have to go to fair watch her when she wants to book a trip to go out of town and make sure she gets the best price. She doesn't have to do that. She doesn't have to go and compare prices at different grocery stores to see how much it costs to buy milk and eggs for their family. No, she doesn't. Neither do, does Travis. He lives in a multi-billion dollar house, probably, I think it's 20,000 square feet and he's one person. Great, I'm psyched for him, but I don't need to compare that to my life. No, I don't have to compare people that are in loving relationships today to my shitty relationship. I don't, not that I have a shitty relationship, by the way, I don't. I have a really great relationship, um, but not every day is great. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, there's the ebbs and flows of every relationship, right? Because we're human, I mean, it's all, but comparing what we are doing inside of ourselves to other people and making, thinking that we need to buy certain things because it's going to make us look better or make us feel like we're rich or we're not rich, whatever it is, all this stuff is an inside job. Don't go picking up that toilet lid and going down places that are not healthy. Because if you already know you're not feeling great, you already know inside of yourself, I'm, I've been feeling depressed. I've been feeling anxious. I've been feeling lonely. I've been feeling tired. I've been feeling lost. I've been feeling cathartic. I've been feeling all these feelings. Don't go to a place that's going to bring more feelings that are not good. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you're having Valentine's Day and everybody has, or, or you believe, quote unquote, that everybody has somebody special and you don't, buy yourself a present. See these roses behind me? If you're, again, watching, I have these, I bought them at Costco. They look like candy canes. They're pink and white. I bought those for myself. Nobody bought those for me. I bought them for me. They're here. I had red roses, but I buy myself flowers every week. I go to Trader Joe's. They've got great prices. And I buy myself flowers because it makes me happy. It makes flowers make me happy. What makes you happy? Is it ice cream? 
which you don't want to have because it seriously makes us really, it's hard to, I tell you, it's like a moment on the lips and eternity on the hips. At least it is for me to get it off. So I can't do that. But what is there for you to get? That's a little something that makes you happy. I had a great guest on last week at the end of last week. She's amazing. And I can't wait to share it with you guys. I think she's coming on in two or three weeks. And I'm, I'm going to actually meet her in person. And um, she was talking about how in our lives, we always wait for this thing, for this time for celebration. Like, I'm going to go on this cruise and I'm going to celebrate by getting drunk. I'm going to go on this to this golf tournament and I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to go do this and get drunk. Instead of doing that, let's erase the old ways. Okay, I'm not doing that anymore. Because I already know I don't want to be blacked out. I don't want to miss any part of my life. Okay, let's pray we all don't get Alzheimer's anyway with what they're putting in our foods. So... Let's do this. Let's take this time to literally figure out what it is that makes us happy. And it has to be something small. And each day you're alive and you do whatever you're doing. And let's say it is you're not drinking anymore. You don't drink one day at a time. Every day you do something special for yourself. Something special. And that special can be just going on a walk. You're like, I'm going to take myself for a walk for a half an hour or 10 minutes. I'm going to do that. Or this week, at some point during this week, I'm going to take some time for myself. I've already carved it out. It's in my calendar. I've got 10 minutes. It's just going to be for me. Or I'm going to go get a manicure. I'm going to go get a pedicure. I'm going to go hang out at the dog park. I'm going to go call a friend I haven't talked to in a long time. I'm going to do something that's going to enrich my life and make me feel better, whatever that is. But you're going to take the time to do that. It's so important. It's so important that you take care and take time to take care of you. It's like filling your own gas tank. You've got to fill your own soul. You're the only one that's going to do that. Our partners can't do that. Our kids can't do that. Our moms can't do that. Our siblings can't do that. Our best friends can't do that. We've got to do it for ourselves and whatever that is. And not one human power is going to do it. So whatever that is for you spiritually, you know, I'm a huge believer in the spiritual stuff. And if you have YouTube, you can go and get you know, great meditations. And it's free. YouTube's free. You might have to watch ads, but who cares? Um, or just putting on a clock for five minutes and just say, I'm going to breathe for five minutes. You know, every cell phone has a clock and on there is a timer and set the timer for five minutes and say, I'm going to put down my phone. I'm going to put it over there. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to take five minutes. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to breathe for five minutes. And five minutes might feel like eternity or it might feel like a blink. And at different times in different days, it's going to feel differently. But do that. And then you're going to build up the time. Get to 13 minutes. That's the best. That's like the best is 13 minutes just to sit there in pure peace. And you're going to look at your thoughts like they're clouds. I'm now I'm watching and it's very windy here in Florida right now and I'm watching clouds just go by and that's like our thoughts. We don't have to hold on to the thoughts like we do when we go down that toilet bowl. We don't have to do that. We just have to watch it go by and then you're going to have another thought and then you're going to have another thought. I'm going to end with this. I woke up on Sunday morning and I had promised my dogs, okay, that I was going to take them to the beach in the morning. I'm like, girls, we're going to get up on Sunday and we're going to go to the beach. Now, my dogs don't know what day it is and what I promised. Let's face it. Do they really remember? I don't think so. But my husband, who I adore, did. He remembered. Anyway, so we're awake. I'm, of course, awake at 6.30 and the sun was going to rise. I think it was at 7 something or 6.55 or something. He's like, all right, come on. We're going to go. Well, I'd woken up. And I kind of like, what am I doing this podcast for? Oh, am I ever going to make money? Oh, no, 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 no. You know, going down that toilet bowl of my own personal life before even looking at a, at a social media, by the way. And I have all these major questions. So I tell him all the questions I have. He's like, wow, that's a lot of stuff. Let's go to the beach. And I'm like, okay. So we load the dogs in the car and we go up to the beach and I get to the beach and I look at the sun about to rise and there's clouds and you can see it behind the clouds coming up over the horizon. And all of a sudden I thought of gratitude. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much to be grateful for. And it just started spilling out like, t -t 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 -t, like waves. I had this gratitude and then I had this gratitude and then this gratitude. And then all those questions I had woken, wake, had awoken with were gone. And I got to this place like everything is going to work out the exact way it's supposed to work out, Elizabeth. So stop and just have some gratitude for right in this moment. I don't know if that'll help you, if you can relate to that, but if you can, or you can relate to any of this that I talked about today, reach out to me at Elizabeth at ElizabethChance.com. That's E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H at Elizabeth, E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H, Chance, C-H-A-N-C-E.com. And I will have, I have a newsletter coming out every Friday. So be prepared for that to come into your inbox. And if you would like that to happen in my description, it has all the links to follow me on social media and the link right to go into, to subscribe right to my newsletter, hit that link. It's the last one in the links of things that you might want to follow me in, but that is it. It tells, takes you right in. And so then the, you can just try out the newsletter, see if you like it. If you don't like it and it's not relatable to you, then get rid of it. If you do like it, let me know. Um, reach out to me, please, and let me know. I love hearing from you. No idea. If you're out there, I'm thinking of you. I'm sending you big hugs. I'm telling you that you are not on this journey by yourself. Don't ever believe that. You've got, I'm here to listen anytime. Write to me. I will write you back, I promise. Subscri subscribe to this channel if you're watching me on YouTube, please. And until next time, everybody, keep getting busy living sober. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>